This is our first domestic flight in quite a while. We're so used to international travel, but here in Terminal 3 of O'Hare, we have all these flags reminding us a lot of the places we've actually been in the last year. Because I asked for garden veggie cream cheese and they gave me plain. We can do better. An all too familiar feeling for us, waiting around at an airport. If this is your first time watching our videos, we actually spent the entire year of 2022 traveling around Europe. We're back in our home country of the US, and this is actually our first time back in an airport, which is so strange to say that after basically living in them. We visited 30 different countries in 2022, and we're about to gear up for our next adventure here in 2023. So getting ready to hop on a domestic flight here in the US, it's strange for us. It feels like pre-YouTube, actually it feels like pre-COVID. We really haven't been on many domestic flights in the past couple years. We're used to having to get our passports out every time, go through some sort of customs process, to be able to just show our driver's license, get on a flight. It's just, it feels so foreign to us, which is hilarious. For our first adventure back here in our home country, we of course decided to travel between two of the worst airports, not just domestically, but in the entire world. That's obviously an opinion, but we've had really bad experiences at both airports. You know that we're at Chicago here right now. If you have any guesses on where we're heading, drop it in the comment section below. And also let us know, what is the worst airport experience you've ever had? And look at that, my invisible watch says that it's time to go and it's time for you to hit that subscribe button. This was like our plane ride. Yeah. That's how bumpy it was. Now I'm sure most of you have already figured this out, but we are at New York City's LaGuardia Airport. I have not been to this airport in a couple years and it looks very different from the last time I was here. I know that they're going through a major reconstruction project and I think a lot of that's already done because it looks really nice. So I said it was one of the worst airports in the world. A lot of people would still agree with me on that. It just has to do with the crazy traffic that comes through here. It's always very busy. Lots of delays, lots of cancellations. Lots of closure. Sometimes they just close the airport because they can't handle all the traffic at once. LaGuardia Airport is good for two reasons. First of all, it's one of the best views of the skyline you're gonna get coming into the city. So if this is your first time visiting New York City, it's actually one of the better airports to go through just to get that kind of extra tour of the city from above. Unfortunately today, it was cloudy, it was rainy, we didn't get the best view. It's still just a little hazy out there, but you can still see most of the buildings make out where Manhattan, Brooklyn, all of the different boroughs are. Second reason that people like to find LaGuardia versus JFK or Newark is that it's a lot closer to the city. This is the closest airport to Manhattan itself. Now some disadvantages of LaGuardia, it is the smallest airport of the three. Like I said, there's just a lot of problems with all 
of the flights coming in at once. It gets very, very hectic here and very stressful at times. We just picked a really good day. And two, there's not really any public transportation options from here. In order to actually get into the city, you'd have to take like a couple different buses to get to the subway. There's no direct connection to the New York City subway from this airport. And from Newark and from JFK, there are some commuter trains that actually work pretty well. But I have heard that they're working on an express rail that will go straight to Midtown from LaGuardia in about 20 minutes. Whenever that happens, it's gonna be a godsend for anyone traveling to New York City. New York is gonna be our home for the next couple weeks and we're really excited to explore the city. This is the largest city in our country, one of the greatest cities in the world, one of our favorite cities. There's so much going on here. Usually when we're stopping in a city, we're there for a couple of days, maybe a week. We're really excited to have this extended stay so we can really dig deep into a lot of different things that the city has to offer. 